The next story starter that we're looking at is dialogue. Instead of always telling the person what our characters are doing, this is a way that we can let our characters speak for themselves. We might see our dialogue. When we look at movie scripts, these are all of the different things that the people say, sometimes to themselves, usually to each other, even sometimes to the audience that's watching. When we look at dialogue, the best thing that we can do is try and keep it natural. We're going to try and make our characters speak in a way that they would speak in normally, that normal people in those situations would speak. But one tricky part with dialogue comes in our punctuation. We use our speech marks, which are two lines at the start, two lines at the end, that come in as tiny brackets just above what we're saying to show the readers that these things are being said by our characters. Before our speech, our speech marks end, we need a comma to show that this is the end of what's being said. Speech marks, comma, said Mr. H. The one thing that I did, I should have added was my full stop at the end of that. To show that this is a complete sentence. I've started with a capital letter inside my speech marks. I've got my two speech marks just above and my comma at the end. I would suggest you guys at home writing this down so that you have something to look back at to remind you of the proper way to use speech marks. The next option that we have when we're looking at using speech marks is when our speech isn't at the beginning of a sentence, it might be at the end or it might be at the middle. They stopped and screamed, comma, speech marks, capital W, where is the monster? Whenever we're going into or out of our speech marks, we need to use our commas. Our commas show that we're coming into or coming out of our speech. If it's at the beginning, coming out, said Mr. Hosni. Going into, screamed, where is the monster? We need to make sure that our speech marks cover what's being said, and we use our capital letters as the first letter inside of our speech marks. The next thing that we need to look at when we're using our speech marks is the way that they're being used. We need to tell the story, let our characters speak and explain what's happening to them, what they're going through. Make it really interesting for the people that are reading, that are paying attention to our story. So our speech marks will let the readers know how our characters are feeling, what they're going through, all of the different experiences that they have. Our speech marks make our characters inside our story come to life. Finally, we're going to have a quick look at the word said. Said is a word that we use all too often. I used it for my first option so that we could have a look at what effect it has. And said is an okay word to use. If we're coming from our action and from our onomatopoeia, our characters might not just be saying how they're feeling. If it's a dangerous situation, our characters might be whispering. If it's a loud situation and there's a lot of things going on, our characters might be yelling. Yelled Mr. H. Screamed Mr. B. Cried with joy. We need to look at all of the different words that we can use instead of said. So continuing with our stories, I would like you to continue and show me how you can use dialogue in all of your stories. By now we should be making our way through our first three sto um, stories where we use our onomatopoeia, our action and our dialogue. I would like you to continue those and when you, once you're finished with those starts of your stories, I want you to come up with a whole new story and show me how you can use all three, how you can use your onomatopoeia 
your action, and then your dialogue. I can't wait to see what you've uploaded to your Google Classroom.